Hello and welcome to ASEAN in Focus. I'm Maricar Velasco delivering to you the latest news in and around the ASEAN region. On today's headlines. The World Health Organization declared a global emergency over the new coronavirus as China reported Friday the death toll had climbed to 213 with nearly 10,000 infections. Flash floods and landslides have killed at least nine people and forced thousands into temporary shelters on Indonesia's Sumatra Island, the local disaster agency said Thursday. A factory manufacturing surgical face mask in Thailand is extending operational hours to cope with fast-rising demand as fears of a deadly virus sweep the globe. The World Health Organization declared a global emergency over the new coronavirus as China reported Friday the death toll had climbed to 213 with nearly 10,000 infections. The UN Health Agency based in Geneva had initially downplayed the threat posed by the disease but revised its risk assessment after crisis talks. In a press briefing, WHO Chief Tedros Adhanom said their greatest concern is the potential for the virus to spread to countries with weaker health systems. Pedros nevertheless said travel and trade restrictions with China were unnecessary to stem the spread of the virus, which has spread to more than 15 other countries. Many countries have already urged their citizens not to visit China, while some have banned entry from travelers from the central Chinese Thank city of Wuhan, much. where the virus first surfaced. The U.S. reported its first case of a person catching the virus from another person on American soil, a man in Chicago who contracted the illness from his wife who had traveled to Wuhan. Airlines began canceling flights servicing China on Wednesday and more followed suit on Thursday. Israel barred all flights from China while Russia said it was closing its far eastern border with China over the outbreak. More than 6,000 tourists were temporarily put under lockdown aboard a cruise ship at an Italian port after two Chinese passengers were isolated over fears they could be carrying the virus. They later tested negative for the illness. From the Chinese colleague, please introduce yourself. I'm declaring a public health emergency of international concern over the global outbreak of novel coronavirus. The main reason for this declaration is not because of what is happening in China, but because of what is happening in other countries. There is no reason for measures that unnecessarily interfere with international travel and trade. So WHO doesn't recommend limiting transfer uh, or trade and and movement. In total, there are now 7,834 confirmed cases, including 7,736 in China, representing almost 99% of all reported cases worldwide. 170 people have lost their lives to this outbreak, all of them in China. We must remember that these are people, not numbers. The Department of Health on January 30 confirmed a positive novel coronavirus 2019 case, saying that the patient was a 38-year-old Chinese woman from Wuhan, China, who is now considered asymptomatic. And uh, today, uh, the DOH is confirming that a 38-year-old female Chinese patient under investigation, or PUI, is positive for the novel coronavirus 2019 das and cov after her lab results arrived today from the Victorian Infectious Disease Reference Laboratory in Melbourne, Australia. The DOH, however, continues to guarantee the public that all necessary precautionary measures are being taken to halt the spread of the virus. The confirmed case arrived in the Philippines from Wuhan, China, via Hong Kong last January 21, 2020. The patient sought 
consul and was admitted in one of the country's government hospitals last January 25 after experiencing mild cough. She is currently asymptomatic. So let me repeat. She is currently asymptomatic, which means she has no fever uh, and no other uh, signs and symptoms uh, suggesting uh, uh, illness at this point. Uh, I assure that the, the public that the DOH is on top of this evolving situation. We were able to detect the first confirmed case because of our strong surveillance system, close coordination with the World Health Organization and other national agencies, and the utilization of DOHS decision tool or the evaluation assessment tool. We are working closely with the hospital where the patient is admitted and have activated the incident command system of the said hospital for appropriate management, specifically on infection control, case management, and containment. We are also implementing measures to protect... The DOH said that it is now working closely with the hospital where the patient is admitted. Duque said that in all, there are 29 patients under investigation. 18 of them are in Metro Manila, 4 in Central Visayas, 3 in Western Visayas, 1 in Mimaropa, 1 in Eastern Visayas, 1 in Northern Mindanao, and 1 in Davao. Duque said that the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Diseases is coordinating with all the local and international agencies concerned. It is also in constant coordination with officials from all ports of entry for stricter border surveillance. The Bureau of Quarantine remains on high alert and is in constant coordination with authorities from all ports of entry for stricter border surveillance. The OH assured that it's, assures that its health facilities are equipped and prepared to receive and care for PUIs as well as confirm 2019 and COVID cases. The OH has recorded a total of 29 PUIs, 18 in Metro Manila, 4 in Central Visayas, 3 in Western Visayas, 1 in Mimaropa, 1 in Eastern Visayas, and 1 in Northern Mindanao, and 1 in Davao. 23 PUIs are currently admitted, and 5 have been discharged but are still under strict monitoring. DOH also reported one PUI mortality yesterday. We did that. Finally, I urge the public to stay calm and remain vigilant at all times. Let us continue to practice good personal hygiene and indeed adapt healthy lifestyles. Thank you. And we are looking at uh, the places where they've been to in Cebu and in Dumaguete. Once we have seen or we have the list of these places, uh, then we do the contact tracing. Uh, for the plane, we do the rules of four. That means we need to identify passengers, four passengers front, four passengers at the back, and four passengers on both sides. Then we contact these uh, passengers and advise them accordingly. But for the community, we are looking at the establishment where they stayed and advise the, own, uh, the establishment owner to identify the employees uh, that uh, had been in contact with the patient and, uh, and from there do the uh, mandatory quarantine to observe them if ever they will uh, manifest any signs and symptoms of respiratory infection. Following the confirmation of the first case of the 2019 novel coronavirus in the Philippines, President Rodrigo Duterte has given his permission for the temporary travel ban on visitors from Wuhan City and the entire Ube province in China, Senator Christopher Lawrence Goh said on Friday. Duterte gave his nod to the temporary travel ban when Goh, his former special aide, made the recommendation to prevent the spread of the deadly virus. 
The health department on Thursday confirmed that a female Chinese national is the Philippines' first case of 2019 NCOV, which originated in Wuhan City in China. The 38-year-old woman from Wuhan, China, who arrived in the Philippines on January 21, was asymptomatic or displaying no symptoms of the newly discovered strain of the virus. Apart from the Philippines, the virus that began spreading in China also affects other countries like Thailand, South Korea, Japan, Cambodia, Malaysia, Singapore, the United States, Canada, France, Germany, Sri Lanka, and Australia. Go said the president was also considering imposing a temporary ban on people from coronavirus-hit countries who wish to visit the Philippines. Go said Duterte is scheduled to meet with medical experts and key government officials next week to discuss all necessary measures to prevent the spread of the novel coronavirus. He also ensured that the government is taking all precautionary measures to address the threat of 2019 and COVID. Three Vietnamese citizens returning from China's Wuhan tested positive for the coronavirus as of Thursday, January 30 afternoon, according to the Ministry of Health, bringing the total number of active cases in the country to four. According to Vietnam News Agency, one of them is being quarantined at Tan Hoa Province Hospital, while the other two are undergoing treatment at the National Hospital for Tropical Diseases in Hanoi. All three have reportedly gone to China's Wuhan, the epicenter of the sweeping pneumonia virus outbreak. Along with a Chinese father and son from Wuhan admitted to HCM City's Cho Rey Hospital, Vietnam has reported five cases of coronavirus infection so far. The pair have been identified as Li Ding, 66, and 28-year-old Li Zi Chao. They were admitted to Cho Rey Hospital on January 22, suffering from pneumonia and later tested positive for coronavirus. The Ministry of Health said both patients were recovering. Li Zi Zhao on Tuesday was given the all-clear. The country is quarantining a total of 32 suspected infected cases, awaiting final test results, while 65 cases have their results returned negative. 43 people are being quarantined despite having normal health as they have had contacts with suspected NCOV infected patients. Pregnant, newlywed, but now trapped near the epicenter of a global health crisis, Thai national Apinya is among hundreds from poorer nations desperate for evacuation from Ube as a deadly virus stalks the Chinese province and the U.S. and Japan risk their citizens out. For days, the government in Bangkok said they are awaiting permission from China to evacuate 65 citizens known to be at ground zero, but the wait is taking its toll. Also, a Thai medical student, ba Badipa Kausala, has barricaded himself in his dorm room with a dwindling supply of food and water. ตอนนี้เอ่อรู้สึกไม่ปลอดภัยแล้วค่ะกังวลเครียดทุกวันในหูเปิดอู่ฮั่นให้ได้กลับบ้านได้กลับเมืองไทยของไม่ออกไปไหนแต่ก็รอค่ะก็หวังว่าจะได้รับข่าวดีจากรัฐบาลไทยในเร็วๆนี้ค่ะช่วยพวกเราด้วยนะคะขอบคุณค่ะ So many of us are very scared for the outcome and we would like the government you know to do as much as they can to get up to get us out of China as soon as they can and when was the last time I went out to get food it was like I think a week and a half ago I went out to get supplies I got six kgs of chicken breast and three kgs of chicken thighs and some veggies but 60 eggs so that would last me like all of these would last me 
approximately two or three weeks if I manage it well. Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen said on Thursday that his country would not suspend flights from China and urged people not to discriminate against Chinese nationals over the virus outbreak. ຫນັງໂຈລຽມຈະບໍ່ໄປຈະຊົນຈັນດາມໃບປະຍຸດຈະບໍ່ຈະມືດີກົມລົດຈໍ່ໄປຈະຊົນຈັນຂອງ สมัยแต่อเมริกาก็ประกาศจ้องจุ้ยได้ประชาชนจัดได้ Philippines, Manila or Quezon City is a popular destination, but oftentimes the hustle and bustle of the city can be more stressful on your vacation. So when you feel the need to reconnect to nature or relax again, there's a beautiful oasis just outside of the city called the Garden at Ciudad de Victoria. that you can see here include hydrangea, snapdragon, and stargazers. They're truly beautiful. The gardens at Ciudad de Victoria are so peaceful, tranquil, and beautiful that it's become a haven for young couples and a very popular venue for engagement photos. The next time you want an escape from the big city, the Garden at Ciudad de Victoria is a wonderful place to visit. Welcome back. Flash floods and landslides have killed at least nine people and forced thousands into temporary shelters on Indonesia's Sumatra Island, the local disaster agency said Thursday. Torrential rain in North Sumatra this week sparked disaster with most victims drowning or hit by logs swept away in the current, the agency added. Safaruddin Ananda Nasution, head of Central Tapanuli's Disaster Mitigation Agency, said... 
They suspect two victims were killed after getting hit by logs. Rampant illegal logging in the area may have contributed to the disaster by loosening the soil and making it susceptible to landslides. Several thousand residents have fled to shelters. This month, record rains triggered flooding and landslides that killed nearly 70 people in and around Jakarta, which is on neighboring Java Island. Entire neighborhoods in Indonesia's capital, a megalopolis, home to around 30 million people, were submerged in floodwaters that forced tens of thousands into shelters. The Southeast Asian archipelago is regularly hit by floods during the rainy season, which started in late November. Jadi segala potensial sudah kita kerahkan, saya juga ini sudah baru turun dari lapangan. Uh, memang banjir yang di Kecamatan Baru Sini, ini baru pertama menurut kami, hemat kami banjir sudah sebesar ini. Foreign selling continues to negatively impact Philippine shares and the peso Thursday, partly on news of increasing number of deaths and infection from novel coronavirus in several countries. The Philippine Stock Exchange Index shed 0.93% or 69.63 points to 7,392.68 points, which BPI research attributed to intensified fears of the coronavirus from China. All shares followed with a drop of 0.74% or 32.51 points to 4,392.55 points. Holding firms posted the biggest decline of 1.40%, which was trailed by the services 1.13%, mining and oil 1.02%, industrial 0.70%, financial 0.61%, and property at 0.21%. Volume totaled to 562.84 million shares, amounting to 5.45 billion pesos. Losers led gainers at 123 to 61, while 51 shares were unchanged. The local currency ended the day at 50.96 from the previous day's 50.83 close. It opened the day at 50.89, depreciating from the 50.72 start in the previous session. It traded between 50.83 and 51, bringing the day's average to 50.904. Volume totaled to 948.5 million U.S. dollars, higher than the 884.55 million U.S. dollars Wednesday. BPI Research expects the peso to trade between 50.80 and 51 to a U.S. dollar on Friday. The health sector of ASEAN, together with counterparts from the People's Republic of China, Japan and Republic of Korea, have mobilized regional cooperation mechanisms to respond to the rapidly evolving threats of the 2019 novel coronavirus. Since China reported the first cluster of unexplained pneumonia cases in late December 2019. These mechanisms reinforce national whole of government efforts to enhance readiness and response measures to mitigate, if not eliminate, the threats of the 2019 NCOV and to protect the 649 million people in the ASEAN region. So far, the virus has killed 132 people in China and infected around 6,000 people in China, China and 15 other countries. Since health officials from China shared the first information on the disease, the ASEAN Emergency Operations Center Network for Public Health Emergencies, or ASEAN EOC Network, led by Malaysia and with the support of ASEAN Secretariat, had been sharing daily situational updates. They also provide information on prevention, detection and response measures to the ASEAN Senior Officials for Health Development of ASEAN in China, Japan and Republic of Korea, plus three countries as well as the contact points of the ASEAN EOC Network and the three ASEAN plus three field epidemiology training network. This is on top of the real-time information sharing through mobile instant messaging within the ASEAN EOC network consisting of disease prevention and control officials of ASEAN member states. 
ASEAN member states also exchanged laboratory readiness and response actions in relation to the 2019 NCOV through the Regional Public Health Laboratories Network led by Thailand. Current national risk communication actions to disseminate preventive and control measures, including combating false news and information circulated in social media, have also benefited from the preparedness and capacity building programs of the ASEAN Risk Assessment and Risk Communication Center hosted by Malaysia. As the 2019 NCOV continues to rapidly evolve, ASEAN member states have com committed to continue to utilize and strengthen regional mechanisms for coordination and cooperation in response to this emerging public health threat. A factory manufacturing surgical face mask in Thailand is extending operational hours to cope with fast-rising demand as fears of a deadly virus sweep the globe. The company Thai Hospital Products says it typically produces 10 million masks a month, exporting 80% to the U.S. and Europe, while the rest is sold on the domestic market. Watch this. And that is the latest news in the Southeast Asian nations. Stay updated about the ASEAN region. I'm Marika Velasco and I am one with 25.